In today's video, I wanna give you three woodworking skills that you have to master in order to create a great product and create a great woodworking business. Let's dive in. All right, welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we're gonna actually talk about woodworking principles. And so normally I'm always talking about business principles, mindsets around your woodworking business. But today I actually wanna dive into some woodworking principles that you're gonna to need to know on your journey to becoming a legitimate woodworker and building a legitimate woodworking business. And so these are pretty straightforward, but they're gonna be massively critical on your journey. So number one, the first skill that you've gotta be able to master is creating really clean, straight joints for all of your woodworking working products. And so what do I mean by this? When you're laminating a tabletop, you're gluing up a tabletop, you need to make sure that these boards fit together super, super tight. There's no gaps in the boards. If you try to force close gaps, that wood will expand and pop that and break that joint over time. So you want to make sure that either you have a track saw that's cutting a really straight line, a table saw that's cutting a really straight line on both sides of the boards, or you have a joiner. Real quick, what you want to do is you want to get a perfectly straight line. And then what we've always done at Iron by Iron Woodworks, when I was the only is that we would take that straight edge that we've created that we look down and that we know is perfectly straight, we'd put that up against our table saw fence and we'd push it through the table saw and create a perfect perpendicular line on the other side of the board. But having really clean straight joints is super critical to having a great product, especially if you're building furniture. So that's number one, you've gotta have really clean straight joints for each of your products inside of your business. Number two is that you really need to understand grain structure. Grain structure, and I'll also say moisture content as well. And so this is where I have personally gotten in trouble when I first started out in my woodworking business is that I didn't really understand grain structure that well. And I also didn't really think about or consider moisture content of the wood as well. And so if you get these things wrong, what's gonna happen is you're gonna build a perfect, beautiful product and then you're always gonna have the grain starts to fight against itself, pops joints or bows tabletops or twists or does things that it shouldn't be doing because of the grain structure or because there was too much moisture still in the wood. And as that wood continued to dry out, it popped joints. Understanding grain structure is gonna be mission critical. And so some of the main principles that you wanna just understand is when you're looking at a board and you're looking at the end grade in the board, you wanna understand like where was this cut out of the tree and how is this board gonna move over time? Along with that, you wanna be checking moisture content because if the moisture content is where it should be, well then that board really shouldn't be moving a whole lot. But what happens is that you may get lumber that has a really high moisture content. And so the thing about moisture content is that it's gonna vary where you're at in the country based on humidity levels. But generally speaking, you want moisture content between like five and 9%. Five is really, really dry in some of the most dry climates in the country. Anything above 9%, I don't think it really matters where you're at. It's probably too moist. Let's say you're laminating a tabletop. You're gluing up a tabletop. Well, we want our grain structure to flip-flop like this because as wood moves and as boards begin to bow, if they do, then we want them to kind of level each other out. If we have all of our grain structure facing the same way and they all start to bow, it's going to do this to the tabletop or this to the tabletop right? And we want to kind of level each other out as that wood is going to expand and contract. And make no mistake about it, my friend, wood is going to continue to expand and contract over time. Just know that that's coming and you want to build your products in a way that they can account for that wood expanding and contracting and it's not going to bust anything or break seams. It's not going to tear itself apart at the seams. Here's number three. Third woodworking skill that you really got to be able to understand and develop to become a great woodworker is applying a really great finish to your product. So finding a good product, and then learning the actual application process for applying that high quality finish. And so for my business, we tried so many different products and so many different things, but what we always came back to was a catalyzed lacquer finish. And this catalyzed lacquer finish was fast to spray. You could spray it and it would be dry within 30 to 45 minutes to sand down and apply another coat. But it also is a durable finish that would last for a long, long, long time. Now there's also Rubio products that are rub-on products. I think there's like Odie's Oil. There's different products that you can find out there that are all gonna be great finishes. But one thing I would always consider is like, is the customer gonna have to reapply this finish down the road? How does it handle hot versus cold drinks or plates sitting on it things like that. So just understanding how a finish is going to respond to its environment is super, super important. And then understanding the best way to apply it so that you get a really consistent, great finish on all of your products as you go. So if you combine these three things, so really understand how to create really clean, straight joints in all of your products. If you understand grain structure and you don't build a beautiful product that rips itself apart at the seams a year from now, and if you can apply a really great finish to that product, you're going to have a pretty good foundation for your woodworking products 
that you go. Now there's so many other things to consider. What does the market want? What product should I build? How, all these different things. If you're wondering about those types of questions, you should be checking out the rest of our channel. That's where we spend a lot of our time, most of our time, is diving into business principles, helping you find products that the market wants, and making some money, whether you're a hobbyist, wanting to make a little bit extra cash as you can, or you're trying to add an additional $15,000 of revenue to your business. Either way, we're here to help you with that on this channel. So free resource I want to share with you guys is the Handmade Business Secrets ebook. It's the first link in the description below. If you haven't downloaded that and checked that out, you should. We've had over 2,400 people that have now read that book, and we've gotten a lot of really great feedback on it. So be sure to check that out if you can. So with that being said, love and appreciate you all, and I'll see you in the next one.